childhood experiences. My first awareness of domestic abuse was when I was eight years of age and I saw a neighbouring woman jump out her bedroom window to uh, avoid her husband. Also the influence from my mother, who was uh, an independent woman in the sense that my father had deserted when I was three years of age. So my mother was king of her castle and she was a great influence on me because another time I came down and found a neighbour asleep on our settee that my mother had taken in the night before. That woman had 22 pregnancies and 18 children. Her husband had wrecked the place the night before and then put a note on the door announcing her death. I was sent up to rip it off the door and bring it over to my mother. So I was consciously aware from a very early age that women, in my opinion, got his shit there compared with men. First of all, I've met some fantastic women in my life and I probably gained more and learned more from the women I've met and worked for in the Women's Refuge than they have from me. But I suppose the women that influenced me in life as I went through life most importantly were people like Pat O'Donovan, whom I knew and I write about in the, about in the book, who uh, was in family, a founder of Family Plan Services. She was innately ladylike and yet a wonderfully courageous person. The other person, the other women that affected me was Margaret Guy, who I was at her 91st birthday party last week and she was, she came out on campaigns helping me to catch husbands that I wanted to catch. She was my driver at times and very often the, the difference between getting bashed up and not getting bashed up was her doing a, a handbrake turn in the, the cul-de-sac to get away. She's 91 now and just as wonderful as ever. Her commitment, now the books have been written on her because she was Guy's Restaurant in Bank Street. And the other person that influenced me that I thought was just a wonderful woman was Anne Connolly, the founder of the Well Woman Centre in Leeson Street. Wonderful, courageous women. Now, having said that, obviously the people who have tolerated me and, and loved me, I hope, was my wife and my mother. But I'm talking about other than family. They were the women that... And the other people that would have influenced me were the workers in the women's refuge. The commitment to it and the women who stuck their necks above the parapet to open the first uh, women's refuge in Ireland, like Nula Fennel, who would have been... From my point of view, she would have been seen as a poshy. But what a wonderful poshy. I think the abortion in Ireland, uh, the abortion issue in Ireland will actually become irre irrelevant because I believe with the development of medicine and pills, women will take a pill and create a miscarriage at any time. Now, as to my views on abortion, I believe that a woman with a crisis pregnancy should be treated with compassion, kindness, and the best of medical attention. And whatever decision she makes, she makes. Not me, not anybody else. And if she decides to go for termination to England, and it should be able to be done in Ireland, again, after she has had her termination, she's likewise entitled to compassion, kindness, and the best of medical attention. And that's all I've ever offered to any woman as chairman of Mary Stokes for Reproductive Choices. And I've no apologies to make to anyone for that. I, I'm very proud of what I did for women. I've never tried to influence a woman, either to have or not to have a, a termination. But I personally, it would break my heart if anybody I was very close to did have a termination because I just love babies. But I do believe in a woman's right to choose. waning and waning very fast, which I'm very pleased about. I think what's going to happen in the future is that there would be a kind of a split in the Catholic Church and you'll have two wings. You'll have what I would call the Opus Dei wing, the died in the wall right wing, like the, the Southern Baptists in America. You'll have that wing and you'll have the other wing of the Liberals who run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. And neither of them are going to be of any benefit to anyone, in my opinion. And the sooner they do fold their tents and fade into the night and stop interfering in people's lives, when all this is based on an unproven assumption to start with, the existence of God.
me an example. When my father deserted my mother, she was approximately 34 years of age, and because of the power and the corrosive influence of the church, there was no, she was therefore condemned to a life of celibacy for the rest of her life. Now my mother was a, got on well with her neighbours, but for instance, if she had stopped going to Mass at that time, she'd have lost any friendship she had with the neighbours, she would have been ostracised. So I began to notice very early on that my mother would, like all the neighbours, go to Mass, sometimes in the morning for 10 o'clock Mass, but I noticed she always went in late and left early. And when her time came to die, a very nice nurse said to her in the matter hospital, Elizabeth, would you like a priest? And she said, no, I have my friend. I hope Johnny Cash will be played, uh, born, 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 <laughs> ring of fire, and, yeah. I, and it would be an atheist ceremony. My family are now adjusted to that, by the way, and I think I realised that my wife often jokingly said to me that she would make sure I'd have a concelebrated mass with a few bishops and maybe a nun there in attendance, but I know now uh, that won't happen. They'd give me a few... Uh, Maybe they'll organise a humanist funeral or something. But it won't matter to me, even if they did bring me to a church, because I'd be dead, and when you're dead, you're dead. I remember a nun asked me once, she said, could she ask me, she was asking me about my philosophy, you know, and about life, and she couldn't, I find it very difficult to handle uh, eternity, the concept of eternity. I see finality in everything, including life, and I'm quite happy to go there. Mm. The big sleep.